Hello my fellow chairs and welcome back to EU4. Today we are going to be playing in Japan because I've been watching the show Shogun and I've been kind of inspired by that show to play as uh, Tokugawa and unite the entire uh, Japanese island over here. And we're also going to go full isolationist and we're going to go for the achievement uh, manufactured in Japan where we have to have manufactories by 1655 in Japan. If you're not familiar with Tokugawa ideas because... Every single nation over here in Japan has its own unique idea set, and most people typically play as Oda, Usagi, and uh, Shimazu, or even Atomo. Tokugawa's ideas are very well balanced. They're not standout ideas, but they are very well balanced and good for what we plan on doing today. You get infantry combat ability, AE impact right off the bat, which that's the good part of their ideas. Then you get dev costs at the end. So yes, we are going to be keeping Tokugawa ideas when we form Japan. We also get morale armies, spy network construction, discipline, stability cost modifier, monthly autonomy change, tolerance of the true faith, and national autumn rust. We also start out allied to Hosokawa, who uh, we're going to use them a lot, especially in our early wars, just constantly. So uh, without wasting any more time, let's get right into it as Tokugawa. So yeah, here we are. We got... A lot of different nations that we're going to have to beat up over here in Japan. But at least our guys look pretty cool. In terms of mission stuff, yeah, we do get our own, you know, kind of unique-ish mission tree. But, you know, it's the one that all the daimyos share. And uh, we're going to wait to kind of see how this all plays out. Who's going to start the very first war. And who's going to allow us to get the Sengoku uh, CB. So we can just attack any of our neighbors whenever we want. We also have a good ruler and heir, a 445 ruler, and then a 433 heir. So I'm going to focus on mill at the start here. So we're going to be getting 10 mil. Uh, I'm also going to go ahead and hand out the primacy of the Bushi, increased levies, aristocrat counselors, and Bushi officer rights, along with religious state, clerical advisory council, religious diplomats, and clerical education merchant guilds uh, we will just do land of commerce because we are one province minor so having zero crownlands really doesn't affect us at all patronage of the arts commercial advisory board indebted to the merchant guilds and merchant guild financial demand and bookkeeping it looks like our general that we got from our bushi is actually really really good he's a three four four i will gladly take that and he will lead us to victory in every every single battle hopefully and we also don't start out with any calves, so I don't have to get rid of any horses this time. Okay, so I can go ahead and start declaring some wars here. We're going to attack this guy, Ogasawara, who's allied to date over here. So they'll allow me to expand up north as well if I co-belligerent these guys, which I will. Let's move here. Luckily, they don't have a fort here. And maybe next I'll attack Toki. And, uh, yeah because I'm the one that started a war I get the Onin war event and uh yeah we get usually army tradition decay till that you know next 30 years so pretty decent finally we get to fight some battles at the start here and of course we're just gonna stack wipe them because I have an amazing general and their armies are poo poo 14a not bad for two provinces and now we can actually invade the north which uh yeah if it's Anything I've learned from Game of Thrones, you want to be the king of the north. So here's our very first incident. Uh, if we choose this top option, this moves us towards open. Uh, or if we choose the bottom option, we're going to move more towards isolationist. As I mentioned earlier, we're going to go full isolationist. And how these affect your nation is here in the religion tab. Uh, if you go full uh, open, or, you know, basically you hit... How this affects your nation is located here in the religion tab and it shows you the different levels of isolationism. If you go open doors, you get trade efficiency, cheaper tech, diplo rep, level one, idea cost, institution spread, level two, construction cost and promote culture cost, level three, missionary and culture conversion cost, and level four, which is what we are shooting for, is the dev cost, tolerance of the true faith, and global prosperity growth. Perfect. For playing tall. Alright, another two wars won with absolutely zero resistance because they had like no troops, or if they did, they were on the other end of Japan. 
And next, I want to attack this guy, Sheba. They're allied to my arch nemesis, Oda, over here. So that'll allow me to expand here, consolidate the north. And from there, I can push and sweep down south. I also almost have 10 favors with my boy Hosokawa. Once I do that, then I'm thinking we will attack Sheba. Or I could just do it now. And that would call on Yamana. I might be better off waiting for Hosokawa here. And uh, even better, Oda uh, actually broke their alliance with Sheba. So, yeah, let's just move in. Take him out. We're also the very first nation in all of Japan to get Miltech 4. So, uh, yeah, everybody, everybody better run for the hills really quick because my army's coming. And uh, Ashikaga decided to be a bit of a jerk. Yeah, made my guy commit Senpuku. So, uh, thanks. Thank you for that, Ashikaga. I'll remember this later. So I'm going to do something a little bit stupid here. We're going to attack Usugi. I'm going to co-belligerent Hadakayama, Imagawa, Kitabake, and uh, yeah, we're going to we're ahead of all of them in terms of mil tech. I could probably stack wipe Usugi's entire army right here and uh, carpet siege their entire country and then move on to Hadakayama so I could just wipe them out. So here we go, our guys fighting Usugi's, stack wipe, move the mercs over here to their capital, and then the rest of the army to just carpet siege. And again, they made my ruler commit seppuku. What the heck, Ashikaga? Oh my god. He really just does not like me. He just wants to watch me just crash and burn. I can complete the Bushido code, which gives us a discipline and a half. For the next 20 years instead of five or even three but all right this usugi war we're gonna full annex them imagawa we're gonna get 44 ae we're starting to get a little bit of a coalition now that's okay i'm gonna finish annexing these two nations and we're gonna wait for a little bit unless i did unless i decide maybe to pounce on the toki because toki would actually be kind of easy to attack uh we'll see all, all the southern Japanese nations really don't care. It's just the northern ones that care right now that I'm expanding this fast. I finally just beat Yamana and Oda in a war. I'm just going to take all of Yamana's money, war reps, and I'm going to make them break a couple of alliances. So I have some rebels I have to deal with, but uh, yeah, now we can actually full annex Oda as well too. And all that's left out of our main early game rivals is just Toki. Everybody else doesn't really care that we've expanded that much, especially because the other main big guys, Hosokawa, are allied. So, um, kind of, kind of got a free pass there. So yeah, once once we deal with these rebels, we're gonna go ahead and attack Toki. All right, with Toki out of the way, yeah, we're just gonna chill. We're gonna lower our AE quite a bit. This will give me a chance, anyways, to recuperate my economy, build up a little bit more manpower, even though I'm like at my max manpower, uh, maybe build up the force limits, state some things, etc. Make my country a really, really strong, because obviously we have to take on Ashikaga at some point. All right, with all of Northern Japan being consolidated under our rule and Hosokawa pretty much consolidating all of Southern Japan here, uh, I think it's time we just break that alliance. And our truce with Yamana is going to be up in about four years. And in four years, we will go ahead and attack them. Well, actually, five years, we're going to have to attack Osakawa. Then we can go after Yamana. Tier 2 government reform. We're just going to go with strength and noble privileges. More manpower is always nice. All right, so our truce with Hosokawa is over. We're going to immediately go to war with these guys. All right, this war with Hosokawa is over. I'm not going to take a 100% peace deal with them because... I mean, regardless, I would not be able to take all this stuff, so I'm just going to take 79%. And then we're going to immediately attack Yamano, who's getting annexed by Ashikaga, then we'll come back for Hosokawa. Truce with Hosokawa is over. Time to full annex them, and then we're going to compete for the Emperorship. With Ashikaga having literally no troops, we're just going to go ahead and attack them. We're going to lose three stab. And finally, that was one of the easiest wars against Ashikaga I've ever had the fight we just had to take their capital and pretty much just wait just wait it out that we were going to just full annex them and uh sure enough that's what we're going to do so of course we will go ahead and unite Japan we're going to keep our ideas 
Because again, we are going to be playing a very tall. When you form Japan, you actually get a much, much larger mission tree all about colonization, conquering stuff over here in Korea, China, etc. Uh, some of the really good missions like this one here actually gives us a gold mine in Echigo if it has at least eight production. Which it only has five, so let's bump that up. Tier three government reform, we're just going to go with expanded royal court. All right, I finally have a okay sized navy, but I mean, it's better than any of the uh, step hordes over here and their navy. I'm going to go ahead and attack them so we can unite with uh, what was I knew over here. So with our border secure, we're just going to be playing extremely tall right now. Uh, my very first idea group, that's right, 1500. I haven't chosen any idea groups because all my rulers keep were continuously forced to commit seppuku. I had a lot of stab hits, like with attacking somebody with a royal marriage, breaking free from my overlord, and of course, coring everything in between all that. So, uh, but we're going to open up with Aristo ideas just purely because of that extra five dev cost. Also, of course, the monthly autonomy change is very nice as well. Uh, obviously, things like the calf combat don't really affect us, but we're playing extremely tall this time around, so we're trying to stack as much dev cost modifiers as possible. And of course, I've had the dev up for the Renaissance because that was 1450, it's now 1500. And of course, also colonialism has spawned in. Um, kind of behind in tech right now so i gotta save up that money hope that renaissance spreads throughout my country a little bit faster uh so then that way it's a little bit cheaper finally with the renaissance embrace in 1511 uh, we get some really cheap tech to pick up my idea group which as i mentioned earlier is going to be aristo early uh for the cheaper dev cost right off the bat for that five percent for our tier 4 government reform, we're just going to go with curtail clerical privileges, cheaper admin tech costs, so I can get caught up in my admin. Second idea group time, we're going to go with infrastructure ideas. Finally, I have completed infrastructure ideas. So now we get the additional 10% uh, dev cost. Which with aristocratic and now infrastructure being completely done uh, we are getting quite a bit of bonuses now and some of our provinces like this one here is down to 19 total dev obviously if I do the local dev cost one that bumps it down to 14 and of course we could get it even more once I complete my idea set so uh, but first what I have to do is spawn colonialism because Printing press is going to spawn in about five, six years, and we're going to be really far behind in terms of technology. And so far, it's looking like Mushashi, which just so happens to be where Tokyo is at, and also a entrepreneur, and we're also going to go ahead and expand infrastructure and encourage development. Now bumps it down to 28 total monarch points whenever we develop this province. And with us embracing colonialism, I was able to jump up by like almost two, three technologies uh, in terms of admin. So guess what we're going to be doing? We're going to be picking up economic ideas. Then we're going to go ahead and pick up defensive ideas because there's a policy that I saw on Reddit that uh, paired up with economic ideas actually gives you dev cost and primary culture minus 10%, which is really, really nice. Otherwise, there's not really anything in the Diplo idea slot that would work for me in this case. So yeah, we're admin mill ideas. That's what we're rolling with today. Would you look at that? It's almost 1600, so it's 1581. And now we have the arrival of European traders. Which, obviously, we're going to go towards full isolationist. It's going to give us a little bit more domestic trade power. So uh, Korea got the bright idea to just go ahead and attack me at this point for Higo, which is down here. Um, they do have a little bit of a larger navy than me, but honestly, they're facing an uphill battle right now. I'm also going to go ahead and choose the free oarsman naval doctrine, because this is going to buff up our galleys, even though 
We have a unique one which gives us more morale of navies and heavy ship combat ability. I don't have any heavy ships. I only have galleys, especially because they're fantastic in fighting this area. So that's what we're going to be rolling with. Also, I need to send my trade ships back um, because it kind of got beat up by the uh, Korean Navy. But I mean, they won, but they still got beat up. All right, our very first battle against the Koreans, 30,000 of them facing a naval crossing penalty against my 30,000 guys. This may go really bad for me. We'll see. Uh, yeah, even with the penalty. Oh, my God. We're on par in terms of tech. I mean, they have more artillery than me, though. But, yeah, they, they're winning that battle. Oh, man. Finally, I stack wiped that 30. Oh, I'm about to stack wipe that 30k stack. Well, what's left of it, the 5. And they're marching 37,000 over here now. Wonderful. Just wonderful. All right, for the first time in this battle, well, in this war, I actually have the numerical advantage. So let's press the offense here. And even that, wow, we're just, I don't know what it is, but the Koreans are really just handling, handing our asses to us. They took quality ideas. I mean, there is that, and aristocratic, obviously the infantry combat and the morale armies, but that's insane. Their general must just be, yeah, I mean, he's way better. He's a 3-3-3-2. Three, 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 Remarkably, we actually won that battle. And we, we wiped out the majority of the Korean army. They're down to their last 20,000 guys. I still have a little bit of manpower, not much. Uh, but if they engage here, they're about to lose their entire... Oh, I was going to say they're going to lose their entire army, but the cowards fled back. And they're also out of manpower because now they have 102,000 troops. And look at that. We actually beat the Koreans uh, with almost 20 war score. They're going to give us money and war reps. Happy with that. I'll take that. And we could go back to being full isolationist, away from everybody else. Finally, we completed our idea set, so now we have that extra 10 dev cost. Uh, so some of these provinces are getting to be pretty cheap, like this one earlier, you know, obviously has a little bit of devastation, so that drives up the development a little bit. But uh, overall, not bad at all, and obviously if I encourage dev, it's going to be a lot cheaper. And we are almost done with economic ideas, and I'm pretty much blasting through defensive ideas. So we'll be able to complete that policy for the extra 10% dev cost. All right, finally, global trade has spawned in Lubeck. So let's, oh, we actually see Europe. And Europe is, honestly, that's not that bad. I thought it was going to be way worse. Obviously, Austria is very strong. They're allied to Russia, who uh, looks like it took they took Finland away from the Swedes. Denmark looks very historical. Uh, we actually have a Holland. They only need one more province, and they could actually go ahead and form uh, Netherlands, but that's probably not going to happen because Galray is allied to both Russia and Austria. Ottomans looking as strong as ever. Akleunlu actually looking good, and Ajam is very close to forming Persia. Ormuz is... That's a good Ormuz. <laughs> and they're allied to the Ottomans and Gujarat, so they're going to be around for a long time. Ethiopia is looking pretty historical. Ajran, one of my favorite nations in Africa. And we do have a Dutch Brazil and Portuguese Mexico. And of course, this is Asia. <laughs> you know, Asia is not looking the best. And uh, Shun, the nation historically that was spawned out of a general that uh, seized Beijing and declared himself Shun for about a couple months until the Qing came over, is, they're, the, they're the strong one. Meanwhile, Jianzo, who's the one that actually went on to form Qing, uh, they're not looking that good. For our Tier 8 government reform, we're going to go with this one, Locky and Proviso. Uh, we just need either either to complete economic or infrastructure ideas. We have both ideas, though economic's not completely done. But this gives us an additional minus 5 dev costs and even more goods produced. And uh, luckily, our province of Mushashi here is a super province at 42 dev. Uh, so we were able to spawn a global trade in that province really fast. Same thing with Setsu. So all we need now is the money to actually embrace it. We also got Admin Tech 16, which gives us access to mills. And some of these provinces, like these paper provinces, they're giving us a whole extra ducat. So obviously going to be building manufactories there. Also this province down here, which produces ch uh, chinaware or porcelain, is also going to be giving us 0.70, which is pretty nice for manufactories. And most of our provinces have manufactories, 
obviously I have to go around deving all these provinces and stuff. I'm using a lot of my Diplo because we don't have any Diplo ideas or anything like that. Just admin and mill. So it's allowing me to actually boost up the production in these provinces and it makes the manufacturers even more valuable. Finally, we completed defensive ideas, meaning we could take that policy, this one here. So some of these are down to 17 dev, and that's after developing this four times. This province I've only devved up once. It has a ton of devastation because I had a tsunami hit it. Uh, but we're going to go ahead and complete this mission, which now gives me an additional 10% dev cost. And we're just going to activate development edicts throughout our entire nation. And we're just going to start just clicking on the cheapest provinces to develop. And now we have provinces that cost over or only four monarch points to dev, meaning I have only five mil power right now. I could dev up this province once. So yeah, we're, we're about to be, uh, we're going to be about to be a really tall nation very soon. And with admin tech 16, it gives you an even cheaper amount of dev to have. Uh, it's reduced by another 10%. And I do have universities, which I am starting to build everywhere. It does take a little bit of time, but yeah, we're going to start building them in some of our more important uh, farmlands and grassland provinces here. So looking for any farmlands, and then once I do all those, then we're going to build them in all of our grasslands provinces, like this one, which is only seven dev, or seven monarch points to actually dev. And this one's four, so that'll make it even cheaper. So I didn't even notice it, but this mission right here, expand the Gokaido, uh, after you complete the non-bond thing, you get uh, an extra five development because I did it isolationist. And then this one, I just need to improve the building or development in a few of these provinces and make sure they have at least three buildings. And all of our provinces in the Japanese region for the uh, Gokaido reform, for, which is tier eight. I believe we're at tier eight. Oh, we just have to enact that. We get an extra dev cost, providential trade power, and also local goods produced in this region. So that's actually a really good reform to do. And our ruler also becomes a great engineer. Oh yeah, I also have uh, the Christians arriving on my shores here in Japan. And uh, we're going full on isolationist here. I, I'm trying to complete as many of these as possible by going full isolationist and then... Uh, I could also complete the one achievement. Where the heck is it? See, we're going for Made in Japan. Embrace manufacturers by 1655. And we are also going for this one. Go full isolationist and six incidents. Which says only three out of the six. But I swear I went full isolationist in all of these. So I just wanted to show you guys this. I have built universities in every single one of my provinces. So... Yeah, everything's very, very cheap to dev. And we have built manufacturers in every single eligible province. The only reason I can't build any in Echigo and also Iwami are because they are gold mine provinces. However, if we look at our total development right now as well, uh, we are at over a thousand development and we are slowly gaining on Russia, Austria, and Castile. I have a feeling... By the time we get manufacturers, we will actually be ahead of Castile because of how cheap it is to dev up our provinces. Most of our provinces now, because I have dev up every single one at least a couple times, is down to at least like, you know, the cheapest one being 16, then our most expensive one being Mikawa, which is uh, actually our old capital when we started out as Tokugawa, at 102. Then behind that's Mushashi. Over here at 83, and then Setsu at 53. So that's a huge drop off on each one of those. Now that's what I call an error, 636. Perfect, I'll gladly take that. Also, our capital, it now has a level 1 center of trade, thanks to the Imperial City of Kyoto here. I'm going to go ahead and upgrade that. And our capital, which has 31 dev, is now down to 7. Uh, in terms of total monarch points needed to dev up this province, so Kyoto's about, so Kyoto's about to be a mega city <laughs> on this side of the world, especially because it has silk. Guess what? That's where we're going to be dumping all those monarch points into. All right, we have finally passed up Russia 
in terms of uh, great power status. We're just a four dev ahead of them. But, you know, we're not that far behind Austria now. We have uh, very, you know, three more years until manufacturing spawn. And I'm kind of hoping. All right, and we actually got manufacturers to spawn in one of our provinces. Actually, this one here in uh, Chikuzen. I figured it would be Kyoto, but I guess not. But hey, whatever. I'll t I'll gladly take manufacturers. Now we just have to embrace it before uh, 1655. And as you guys could see, luckily because we built manufacturers in every one of our provinces, it's gonna spawn. We're gonna have manufacturers probably be the very first nation to actually have it. Uh, because especially because all of our provinces are so high in terms of total development. And there we go. A year later, we're actually able to embrace manufacturers. Perfect. And that should actually shoot us up in the charts. Yep, there we go. Uh, got the Made in Japan achievement. Where is it? Probably at the bottom. There we go. Embrace manufacturers by 1655. As you guys hear my steam little ding doodle loot. And let's see, we're going to give it a month. And that moves us up to the second greatest power. Not bad. And, you know, we're if I just dev up a couple more times, I would actually be ahead of Castile, which I will go ahead and do that. So we are at least ahead of Castile. And there we go. Now we're at 1319. They're at 1317. And this is how tall our nation looks. As you can see, Korea, obviously, just as tall of a nation. I'm... Honestly surprised that they're not on the great power list whatsoever. They're below Shun. If anything, they're probably just below Shun. If you guys want to see me play tall as a few more nations, maybe see if uh, we can't spawn other institutions as those nations, uh, let me know in the comment section down below. There are a lot of nations good for playing tall on EE4. And I haven't really covered as many as I probably should have. You know, I, I've mainly only covered like Pegu and stuff and now tokugawa japan but that's because of the show shogun so uh as i said hope you guys really enjoyed this video and i will see you guys in the next one chairman out